from space that was clearly due to extraterrestrial broadcasters? Well, the answer is no. I mean, I wouldn't be sitting here if the answer weren't no. I'd be relaxing on the Côte d'Azur having a drink, I'm sure. We haven't found them yet. So far, the aliens have been coy. Jill Tata and Seth Shostak have both dedicated their lives to listening out for a message they may never receive. Every day when we go to the telescope, we have some sense of anticipation that we may, in fact, find the signal. We put champagne on ice in the refrigerator here and wherever we observe because we do plan for success. The cosmic odds are stacked in their favor and improving with every new astronomical discovery. There's no shortage of places a message might come from. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, contains over a hundred billion stars. If every one of those stars were a grain of salt, they would fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool. How many of these stars have planets that could be home to an alien intelligence? Until recently, we could only guess. But over the last five years, astronomers have made an extraordinary breakthrough. They've discovered over 20 planets outside our solar system, and they believe there may be literally billions more. My guess would be that something like 50% of all the stars in our Milky Way galaxy, which itself contains 100 billion stars, probably something like 50% of them harbor planets. Jeff Massey is one of the world's most successful planet hunters. He and his colleagues have discovered more planets orbiting around other stars than orbit within our own solar system. Standing high on the summit of an extinct Hawaiian volcano, the giant Keck telescope is Mars's most penetrating eye on the universe. In 1999, his team made their most startling discovery. This time, they found not just a single planet, but three worlds orbiting the same star, Upsilon Andromedae. We have found now a complete system of planets, just like the system of planets we have around the sun. These are not isolated freak planets that we had been finding, but at least in this one case, we now realize there's a complete system that is very reminiscent of the ordering of the planets around our sun. This new planetary system lies 320 million million miles from Earth. The closest planet whirls round its star in just four days, the outermost in four years. So far, their equipment can only pick out the real heavyweights, planets the size of Jupiter. But the planet hunters are convinced there's greater treasure to be found. There's almost no question that among the 100 billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy, there are not just the large planets that we've been finding, but of course smaller ones, probably indeed in greater numbers. And so Earth-like planets are out there. NASA's proposed Kepler mission may provide the definitive proof of Earth-like planets. In the early part of the 21st century, this space telescope will continuously monitor 160,000 stars. Kepler's eagle eye will watch for any star that blinks, even when a planet as small as Earth passes in front of it. But if we do find an Earth-like planet, there's no guarantee it will be home to intelligent aliens. It may be too hot, too cold, or too poisonous for E.T. to survive. Or perhaps alien life may have evolved on planets where the conditions would be far too inhospitable for humans. Turn by, turn by. Hey, Kirk. Move on by. Hey, Kai, Kai. 
To find out just how extreme an environment can be and still sustain life, NASA is researching the most hostile places on Earth. Before we set out to look for life on other planets, this research will direct us where to look. NASA scientist Tony Phillips is searching for primitive life in one of the coldest places in North America, high in the eastern Sierras. Right now we're at the White Mountain Summit. We're at an altitude of over 14,000 feet. The pressure here is very low. During the winter time, the temperature here is uh, comparable to the temperature at the South Pole during the South Polar Summer. So the environment is very extreme. Not much lives here, but we suspect that there may be microorganisms living in the soil or living in the permafrost beneath the layer of rock, and no one knows whether they do or not, but that's what we're trying to find out. Hike, Tovik, hike! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, guys. The NASA scientists have discovered that life can survive in places where no one had expected. It now turns out that life can survive just about anywhere that there is water. It doesn't seem to matter how hostile the environment is. At Yellowstone Hot Springs in Wyoming, Dave D. Murray has proved that microbial life can even survive in boiling water, an extreme environment that we never thought possible before. The limits for life are much broader than we had previously suspected. We've now discovered that life can exist up to 113 degrees centigrade uh, a higher temperature than we had, had dreamed about 20 years ago. But we find that that is actually a very nice place for certain organisms to live. If life can survive at these temperatures, perhaps it can live anywhere. Mono Lake in California is one of the most hostile environments on Earth. Its scenic beauty is deceptive. The lake is so loaded with salt that it's poisonous to us. Jack Farmer has discovered that even here, life can find a way. In Mono Lake, the salinity of the water here is two and a half to three times seawater. In addition, the, the pH of the water here is around 10 and a half, very alkaline. And yet, that's not a barrier to life. Organisms are thriving here. The lake is teeming with microbial life. In the last decade or so, we've begun to realize that, that it's really a microbial world. This, this world that we live in is dominated by microorganisms. We've come to realize that that, that microbial life can occupy